Hey guys, we took an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with a Kaisa supplementary guide, and today we'll be going over the sort of slight variation of Kaisa's build. Now I recently just did an updated complete guide on Kaisa, so check that out if you haven't, because that in my opinion is her main build. But this one basically, you're just switching the order of building Runan's Hurricane and Infinity Edge, which is just a minor change, but Overall, at the start, you have quite a major change in terms of the mini, or not mini, the, the like second tier and first tier items you go for. So, in this case, you're rushing a double BF sword, as you guys can see. So, I'm gonna just go through the build and explain how the evolves work and how the build itself works. So, as you guys can see, as your first two items, you want to rush double BF sword. Now, Double BF Sword will give you your Q Evolve. Now that's the main reason why you go for Double BF Sword and you don't just go straight for Storm Razor and then for IE because basically you still want to get your Q Evolve as fast as possible. Now this of course costs 3k gold so if you get a kill or two in lane or like a kill and two assists for example, you should be able to get Double BF Sword before the Dragon but if you don't get a kill, I don't think you can actually do it. You will be just a little bit off your second BF Sword so just take a, a note of that, that you may not always have Q Evolve for the Dragon. So you go for Double BF Sword, and after going for Double BF Sword, you actually go straight into the Storm Razor. Now obviously Storm Razor is pretty much the best ADC item in the game, gives you all the stats that you want, the attack damage, attack speed, and the crit. Then here is the real first uh, major change in my opinion, which is to go for the Infinity Edge as your second uh, full item instead of going for Runan's Hurricane. Now, of course, uh, you will be able to see that the first BF Sword actually built into the Storm Razor and the second BF Sword actually built into the Infinity Edge. So after you complete Infinity Edge, you don't have like small bits and pieces of items like a long sword or like, you know, a moral reminder hanging about in your build. So you, you it, it is kind of a more efficient way of building in that sense that you complete full items faster. And yeah, so that is sort of the build you start out with. Now I'll show you guys the final build. So the final build obviously it, uh, involves going for a Runan's Hurricane as your third item. Now the Runan's Hurricane will of course give you your 75% crit as well as the major aspect of spreading uh, Kai'Sa's auto attacks onto three targets so you can proc your passive uh, you know, onto three different targets basically. So first three items will give you 75% crit, then you go for a Moral Reminder which will of course give you the Grievous Wounds and the Armor Penetration, then you finish off with GA. As I always mentioned, I'm a firm believer in, you know, ADCs taking GA because, you know, you can't really rely on your team or your support or whoever to really protect you, especially in solo queue, so you, in my opinion, you always need the GA for yourself. Uh, for the boots, Generally, now the final build shows um, uh, armor boots, but I do believe in the initial build I, I did, uh, I had the basic level boots on the initial build, but the boots generally you want to go for gluttonous grease because you don't really have a lot of lifesteal, but you can also go for defensive boots if you so choose, and of course for the enchant normally you go for stasis, but proto belt and uh, quicksilver sash is also uh, options for you, and as you guys can see for the runes you go for Conqueror and the full suite of the Hunter runes and for the spells it's normally Flash and Exhaust. Now for more in-depth explanation on runes and spells you can refer to the uh, updated uh, complete guide. Of course I'm not going to go through all those again. I'm just going to briefly go through the items which is exactly what I've done. And now we can jump straight into the gameplay. Alright so here we have the double BF sword Kai'Sa gameplay. Now at the very beginning of the gameplay, we got a little bit of time to discuss, so I said this in my updated complete guide as well, but personally I don't really like this build as much as the other build. Now the changes are relatively minor, but in my opinion the two huge changes is number one, with the other build you get the you get the Moral Reminder at the start of the game, and I found having Moral Reminder very early as part of your default build is really useful in a lot of uh, matches, especially with a heal uh, support. Uh, heal on support being meta at the moment, and there's a lot of enchanter supports being very meta at the moment, like Ayumi, like Nami, you know, um, you know, supports like that. I found the the moral rhyme to be very useful, and secondly, I find that getting uh, multiple, um, getting a uh, Runan's Hurricane early compared to IE and getting your E Evolve is a lot more useful. Firstly, for having the Runan's Hurricane early to spread the passive, especially against more tanky teams, and also secondly, um, 
for having the E evolve earlier. Your E gives you a lot of utility with your invisibility because you cannot be auto attack, cannot be targeted, you know, when you're in your invisibility. So um, I find that that is a pretty huge change in, in that aspect. So I do actually uh, prefer the other build a lot. Whereas this build, you're just fully going for damage. Like, if you think about it, having both Storm Razor and IE at the start gives you like 50% crit rate, 230% crit damage I believe it's 20 or 25 percent attack speed and like a whopping like 95 AD so that's huge damage uh, you know when it comes to that aspect now, in, uh, now we can actually talk about the gameplay which as you can see a lot of heavy trading uh, going on so far and Jack's coming in for a gang already in soul and Graves coming in for the counter gang I get stunned uh, the heal Pop my Janet allows me to escape back into the tower. Jax goes back in um, into basically four people by himself. Gets kited by Kaisa and dies to first blood. Here I managed to trade the kill onto the Aurelian Soul by popping my passive with my W. So we kind of salvage the situation by event essentially trading one for one. Uh, which of course is beneficial to me in this case because I got the kill. Now Zaya finds herself in a 2v1 against me and Janna. She tries to get the kill. Uh, onto Janna but doesn't manage to do so so therefore I managed to essentially pick up two kills uh, which is a really amazing start. Now this build really shines when you get early kills because this build is a lot more snowbally than the other build. Now honestly I could uh, say that you could situationally go for this build or the other build depending on how well you're doing. Like if you're doing very well, you can go straight into double BF sword into the full damage build or rather more rushing the damage because the build technically, the final build technically is the same. It's just the order in which you build it. But if you're doing neutral or behind, you should probably go for the more uh, utility kind of rush instead of the damage kind of rush. So uh, it really works out because both builds built a BF sword as your first item. So you can just build a BF sword and you can work from there. Like for example here I got du a double kill. I can just go for a second BF sword instead of going for a mortal reminder and a long sword. So really uh, Kaisa's build is very very flexible. You can sort of you know, work around the, the game situation. Now here Rakan takes a huge chunk of damage eating basically everything I have to offer. Uh, he unfortunately escapes with 1 HP. I try to exhaust him to slow him down. Um, but it doesn't really work out and basically Kaisa ends up trading back all the damage onto me so in the grand scheme of things um, uh, Basically we traded all my health for all of Rakan's health so uh, not I mean it's not the best but it's not the worst either it's just a trade So either way the dragon is gonna be coming up in the next 20 seconds So I'm gonna back I got my second BF sword because I, of course I did get a double kill uh, or rather two kills you know in the lane so I do manage to get my double BF sword before the first dragon uh, which is of course great news so with the with the uh, double BF sword and the Q evolve basically you can instantly clear a wave almost instantly clear, clear a wave with just one Q so here case in point I just you know press Q and I didn't hit the third minion actually but the third minion would have died as well generally if there's three minions in the wave you can almost instantly clear it uh, of course not with the cannon but there you go as you can see I queued the, the three minions and basically they're, all three of them were almost dead I didn't queue the cannon because I want to just auto attack the cannon down so anyways yeah there you guys can see Kaisa's wave clear becomes really good with the moment you get Q evolved so here I'm just going to clear out the enemy ward putting a ward onto the dragon because we don't we didn't really know where the graves was but obviously we see graves uh, show in mid uh, now, but just now when I was warning Dragon, I didn't know if he was on there. We know he's not on the Herald because there's already a ward on the Herald. Now, it obviously shows that he's going top side here, whether be it for a gang or for the Herald. So it is a good time for us to start out the Dragon. Now, Jax wouldn't, shouldn't have any problem doing the Dragon by himself since the Graves is, is not even contesting it. So instead, here we find ourselves in a bot lane um, 2v2. Now, um, the Jax actually decides to stop the dragon to come and help us in the 2v2 also because of Aurelian Souls Rome. So it becomes a 3v3 with the two bot lanes uh, plus our jungler versus their mid laner here. Now Janna gets really really chunked here. I, as you can see, huge damage from me onto the Zaya. Uh, she exhausts me. I flash over and get the kill since she's already 1 HP. I managed to kill the Rakan for a double kill. Graves is on the way down trying to snipe the Aurelian Soul. Uh, Graves slows me with the smoke screen and I use the Janna's movement speed passive to be able to walk towards her. Now Graves makes a huge mistake by using his end of the line and putting himself into tower range which obviously basically just means that he dies. Got a little bit greedy for me but he basically ended up in a 1v4. So there he goes. Tried to snap the Orenon Souls 1 HP but I don't quite get it. In the meantime, uh, the 
the Rakan uh, has come back, Zaya has respawned, she's also come back, the fight has been that long. Uh, but we do manage to pick up the first turret. Camille picks up the first turret actually, and we pick up the second, like basically a second later. Now here, Jax actually survives for a long time, goes back in. I think he actually could have easily gotten out if he didn't go back in there, but I do trade the kill onto Rakan as well as Zaya. So overall, I'm getting a whole ton of kills and basically uh, sort of just kiting around the fights, just not uh, trying not to be the focus as best I can and pretty much just picking up the, uh, all the kills. So I'm 5-0 and 2 at the moment with double BF sword already. So we can go back, we can pick up nice. some items, pick up the Storm Razor, pick up the boots, and now we got the we got the Storm Razor already. So we have the slow, we have you know all the extra stats that Storm Razor gives. Of course, B BF sword only gives flat damage, which which while it is very good, of course you want a full item. Now here, as you can see, Skirmish is sort of breaking out in the... Um, kind of the mid lane to river um, area. I ward over there, dodge the Rakan grand entrance. As you can see, huge burst damage onto the Rakan. Uh, uh, Ari finishes off uh, the kill and we're going for the graves. I've managed to finish off the graves. And yeah, so at this point, pretty much we can go for whichever objective we want. Camille is already on the Herald herself, so we're going to go for the dragon. Camille picks up the Herald and we are going to pick up the dragon. So we secure both objectives. For our team, no contest from the enemy team because their jungler is obviously dead. Um, Jax can finish off the dragon by himself. I'm just hovering around the area because it looks like the enemy team might want to kind of engage in a fight with my team. Now Jax doesn't, doesn't seem interested in the skull, so I'm just going to take the skull. He seems more interested in the blue buff. So here I'm just hovering around the area again because uh, it looks like there's a fight going to be happening. Now I actually do want to back to pick up items, but... I'm just backing and paying attention to the situation at the same time. I cancel my back because yet again, it looks like a fight is going to break out. And same thing here, it looks like a fight is going to break out again. Janna's trying to bait them into the bush for our team to fight. And here we go with the fight. Rakan goes in with a pretty nice ulti, nice pushback by, by Janna. Uh, but we find ourselves stuck in the Jarvan pit, which is definitely not where we want to be. I'm um, getting pretty much destroyed by Aurelian Soul and Graves at the moment. Aurelian flashes over and manages to get the kill onto me. Now the major mistake here is that my team wasn't all on the same page. The Jax was uh, off on his split pushing journey while the rest of us were trying to bait uh, in the enemy team for a fight. If the Jax was around, uh, the fight might have turned out differently but uh, Jax went uh, and landed up going to the second tier uh, tower instead. Now he does actually get the second tier tower so uh, that you know, that is of course a good thing but uh, we, we don't know how the fight would have been if he was there and we kind of more or less lost the fight um, more or less but yeah so anyways uh, Jax kind of gets caught um, uh, split pushing and there ends up becoming another uh, having another fight where Camille actually picks up a double and Camille is doing really well um, pretty much my whole team is doing well as you guys can see from the scores Camille's 5 and 0 oh, I'm 6 and 1 um, Janna 2 2 1 and 7 um, Jax and Ari not doing the best at the moment. Uh, Jax very much so. You'll see for the rest of the game he's not doing too well. Ari actually gets a little bit better later into the game. We summon up the Herald, uh, but we are already gonna pick up the first tier tower in mid. So it's gonna we're gonna let it collide into the second tier tower if we can. Rakan goes in with another ult. I managed to actually kite away such that I don't get hit by his ult. Managed to burst the graves instantly and ult in to try to kill the Aurelian, and I do get the Aurelian. Alright, here Jarvan goes straight in onto Janna. Um, good distraction by him for his team to escape. Rakan manages to slinker off, but he's gonna sacrifice himself. And here we're gonna go for the tower. Even though we ran out of minions, we have three people against one Zion, so we can just tank the tower and just get get the uh, get the tower itself. Ari kind of backs away, which actually jeopardizes the mission a little bit, but uh, it does work out in the end. And we're just gonna back off. <coughs> Alright, so at this point, as you can see, we're really strong. We have the first two item combination of the Storm Razor and Infinity Edge already. We have the, the completed Gluttonous uh, uh, Stasis. And, of course, we're going to be building towards the Runan's Hurricane. Now, Jax, at this point in time, he's 1 and 4, so uh, and I'm 8 and 1, so obviously I should be taking the red buff. Thankfully, he doesn't smite it away, so... Um, I'm not too sure if he wanted to give it to me or not. Kind of looked like he did it, but he didn't smile it away. So you know that it works with it works with me. I I do have the debuff eventually. Instantly um, clear the wave, of course, as I mentioned. And honestly, at this point in time, no objectives on the map. Nothing too much, you know, to to do. Camille's trying to chase down a Rakan. Rakan grand entrances out of the situation. 
and Restore are just pushing because uh, at this point in time, we, we are really a, a whole lot stronger than enemy team. So uh, we can pretty much do whatever we want. It's, we have a 10k goal lead uh, by this point. So enemy team cannot really do all that much. They can't really fight us unless they outnumber us. So as long as we stick together and don't do anything too reckless, it should be fine. So Harold and Dragon are both about uh, to come up. So Camille, as you can see, she's going toward the Herald. And we're going toward the Dragon. Now Cloud Dragon, in my opinion, uh, is the most important Dragon to get in the game because the movement speed is actually very, very useful. Now the issue here is that Jax jumps in pretty much uh, like 1v4 and simply just feeds to the enemy team. Now as I said, uh, Jax not the best player in the world. So there goes our jungler. Um, Graves uh, actually goes in to contest the Rift Herald and actually Camille actually does manage to secure the Rift Herald. Not too sure what was going on there because uh, I'm paying attention more to the fight that I'm having in front of me both in the actual game and in the replay as well. But uh, I'm going to assume Camille hit the eye so he wasn't able to steal it. So both both junglers are down basically and we're, we are basically going to just go for the Dragon. Now the reason for that is that basically our team is so strong that if they want to actually try to try to come and contest the dragon we can just turn on them kill them and then pick up the dragon so no real issues there uh, in the meantime there's basically a mini aram going uh, down in the mid lane with uh, with their team kind of running toward us and our team running toward them we get the kill onto the jarvan and i get trapped into the jarvan ultimate i ult out of the jarvan ultimate uh, get off my Q onto onto Rakan and try to basically with the little bit of help I have stay safe at, at a backward kind of area in the team fight and just DPS whoever I can. Of course I do have that uh, gluttonous uh, griefs as well as having the hunter vamp prison. So I do have you know a little bit of life steal to kind of recuperate a little bit of my health. So here there's a huge wave in bot. I want to push the, the huge bot wave. Now here uh, a disaster kind of happens in mid where my team uh you know uh, kind of all dies in mid, which probably wouldn't have happened if I stuck with them in the mid lane. But I thought that they got this with the Herald, especially that they could be, they were able to push down the inhibitor. But uh, it kind of was, was an error in judgment on my part, where I kind of thought our team was a lot stronger than we are. So instead, uh, we managed to give over the the shutdown on um, Ari onto them, and Jax dies again for the sixth time. Um, so I do manage to pick up the whole wave though and I do have my 3 item uh, power spike and finally get my E evolved uh, after picking up my Runan's Hurricane. Now at this point I got the triple crit items really really strong at the moment. Boom 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 as you guys can see. Critting on uh, pretty much all the uh, jungle monsters and the minions as well. 75% crit chance normally will crit uh, of course. So here we're just gonna roam around the area, see see what's happening. The end, we can spot a couple of members on the enemy team in the top side. We're gonna check the bot side, see see what we can get. Uh, we we find a wild Aurelian soul who just picked up the blue buff. Three of them are here as well, Aurelian soul and the enemy bot lane. Rakan actually goes in, but his team doesn't follow up at all, and we just instantly burst him with the um, Q W auto attack combo. Now Jenna is going in, so I'm gonna follow follow her, and we're gonna see what we can do. Now honestly, I feel that I could be very, really aggressive and go in on them over uh, right here because they didn't actually have a second tier tower, but I didn't see the need to risk it in a basically 2v1 because Janna is 1 HP uh, where, while my team is uh, just pushing in top. So no reason to take uh, unnecessary risk in my opinion. So uh, why not you know, just, just do whatever damage I can and you know, not uh, int myself away just in case. So here we have a huge minion wave in the mid lane. We're gonna clear out the enemy minions so our minions can push in onto the uh, inhibitor tower itself. We did, um, in the meantime, we can use our, our minion wave in the bot lane to pick up the bot lane inhibitor. The top lane inhibitor just uh, picked up by the Camille. So we got top lane inhibitor, we got the uh, bot lane inhibitor and mid lane inhibitor as expected was taken uh, by the minions. Now here Jarvan is really low. I wanna ult onto him but I do get smoke screened by the grave so I can't really see anything so instead I uh, out for the shield and I stasis immediately flash out and somehow managed to survive. Rakan flashes forward to try to kill me but he dies. I hit uh, my W onto the graves as well to do what damage I can. Pick up the fruit so that I actually have some uh, health to work around with and Ari manages to finish off the kill. So overall a relative, relatively big disaster for the enemy team. Basically majority of them all die and we more or less get away scot free. More or less, uh, being the keyword. Obviously, we do we did suffer some losses, but not too bad. We pick up the entire model reminder as well as the chain vest. Of course, going toward our final item, the GA. The Elder Dragon is coming up in the next um, twenty uh, seconds or so. So, of course, that is the uh, objective to be contested. I'm setting up vision around the area. 
so that we can see if the enemy team is going to come and contest. Now, take note, the enemy team has zero inhibitors, so it's going to be very difficult for them to contest uh, because it's very easy for us to just backdoor them with three waves of super minions and, uh, you know, just an exposed nexus, basically. So, here... Uh, Camille decides to actually go for the Graves to, to take out their enemy jungle before we go for the objective. I think that's a good idea, so we're going to rotate over to try to back her up. Now she's still uh, off on the flank trying to find the Graves. She does manage to hit the CC onto the Graves. So because of that, I managed to ult over and pick up the kill onto Graves as well as Rakan. So, uh, really nice job by the Camille. Here we're going for the Zaya and the Erlen. So Zaya uh, gets hit by the Charm. I believe she uses QSS to get out of it. She still dies to Camille anyways. Um, so we don't even need the Elder Dragon anymore, we can simply just force the end of the game. Nice charm into Tornado uh, by the enemy team. The enemy team basically just surrenders at this point because they know the game is over. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the game. So as usual, I'm going to be leaving you guys with the stats. So thank you so much for watching the video and goodbye.